Hey, it's Eric from Wander with Eric. Here I am today in front of the New Hampshire State House in Concord, New Hampshire. It's the capital building of the state. It's a historic building. I know it's been closed inside for a long time due to the COVID related stuff, so I'm not 100% sure if they're gonna let people go in to look, but we're gonna try. And while we're here, we're gonna look around the outskirts, this beautiful landscaped area here that they have. They got a bunch of statues to look at and other interesting things, so let's wander and check it out. The New Hampshire State House is located just off of Main Street in downtown Concord, New Hampshire. Approaching from the Main Street side, you'll notice the Memorial Arch, which was erected in 1891 to commemorate the soldiers who served in the nation's wars. Little did they know, the biggest wars were yet to come. Franklin Pierce was the only U.S. president to hail from the state of New Hampshire. He was the 14th president who served from 1853 to 1857. He's a bit of a controversial figure as the Civil War broke out not long after his presidency, raising questions about his policies. didn't somehow miraculously get a hold of the actual Liberty Bell, this is a copy. This sundial is a Civil War memorial. The State House was built between 1816 and 1819 out of local New Hampshire granite and was significantly upgraded in 1864 and again in 1910. It's notable for being the nation's oldest state house in which the legislature still occupies its original chambers. This memorial commemorates conquered citizens who made the supreme sacrifice in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. John P. Hale served several offices in New Hampshire and the U.S. in the mid-1800s and is notable for being a strong abolitionist. General John Stark was a Revolutionary War hero, notable for the battles of Bunker Hill and Bennington, who later came up with the New Hampshire state motto, Live Free or Die. That's probably the best state motto of all, in my opinion. Daniel Webster worked his way up to U.S. Secretary of State in the mid-1800s. Fortunately, we were allowed inside for a look. Let's see what's in there. When you first enter, you'll find yourself in the Hall of Flags, which commemorates wars in which New Hampshire regiments fought. Heading off to the right after entering, you'll pass by some Civil War artifacts, then you'll find the Visitor's Center. There's a lot to take in here, and some nice folks that can help you out if you have any questions. You can also get tours of the building at certain times, and you can find self-guided tour brochures. Since New Hampshire has the first in the nation primary, there's an exhibit here celebrating all the candidates who have come through. You'll also find several interesting artifacts related to the state of New Hampshire. And a gift shop where you can get a souvenir for that special someone in your life. You'll also find information and brochures on all sorts of attractions in New Hampshire and neighboring regions. There are also a number of interesting historical dioramas celebrating some of the key events in New Hampshire history.
After the visitor's center, I return to the Hall of Flags. The Roll of Honor on the wall features New Hampshire residents who died in the First World War, and in front of it on the floor is a plaque honoring those who won the most decorated military prize in the nation, the Medal of Honor. The flags themselves actually show battle damage as they were used during the Civil War and were being fired upon as the person carrying the flag was generally the center of attention. Small plaques beneath each flag tell which battles that regiment participated in. The cases housing the flags here were built in 1899 and have not been opened since for fear that the flags may deteriorate in the open air. There are also memorials here to soldiers that fought in more recent conflicts as well as those who never came back. Heading around to the left side of the building, you'll see this very large Civil War painting, which is actually a copy of one that's on display at Gettysburg National Military Park in Pennsylvania. On my way upstairs, I took a moment to examine the interesting architecture of the elevator here. This chap, Benning Wentworth, served as governor of New Hampshire before the United States was even formed in the mid-1700s. There are more than 200 paintings on display in the State House, most of which are men, but there are a few women as well. It can be a lot to take in, especially if you don't know who these people are but I'm sure they all left a stamp on the state of New Hampshire in one way or another. I found my way into the gallery overlooking the Senate chambers. This part of the building dates from 1819, New Hampshire having the fourth smallest state senate with only 24 members. This room also features murals by artist Barry Faulkner. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to make my way into the House of Representatives chamber, which is what this building is most noted for, a terrible oversight on my part, for which I apologize. There's a further assortment of paintings and other documents to examine on the third floor, and a nice view of the State House Dome. Unfortunately, you can't get into the State House Dome as it's closed to visitors. Back on the first floor, on the opposite side of the building from where we went up, you'll find more paintings of very prominent individuals such as General John Stark and Mary Baker Eddy, the founder of the Christian Science Religion, who is also a local to the Concord area. This plaque commemorates the Pilgrims of the Mayflower Voyage. Benjamin Butler was a prominent general during the Civil War and later governor of Massachusetts.
there's a little bit more to take in outside the building that we haven't seen yet, so let's go check that out. Moving around the back of the building, we find this monument to George Hamilton Perkins, who was a prominent commander in the American Navy, especially during the Civil War in which he participated in the capture of New Orleans. There's also this black walnut tree donated by Mount Vernon, home of George Washington. Well, that's about it for today. Hope you enjoyed wandering with Eric, and you'll join us again next time. Until then, keep exploring. <laughs>